Hello and welcome to Virtual Thoughts episode number eight. I'm here with Eric Chu, the founder and president of High Trust. Welcome, Eric. Hello, Edward. Thank you for having us. Now, I've known you guys for a really long time. What was it? You, Hema, and I met at VMworld 2009 or something like that. You were sharing a booth with an um, that might have been, been 2008 before we went public with what we were doing. Well, you had shirts that said High Trust, so. They also said another consulting company uh, on it as well. Yeah, we shared a booth at that at that time. Well, it was 2008 then, because I met you guys sharing a booth, and that consulting company got bought by somebody else. Yep. And here you are buying companies. You bought High Cloud, uh, high, cl uh, high Cloud Security. Yep, yep. So on... Expanding our vision, expanding our scope. Well, you got just for the audience. I mean, High Trust has been the center of an ecosystem that's rather intriguing, and that's been around um, virtualization management. The virtualization management, basically proxying management calls to get a better understanding of what's going on inside your environment, who did what, when, where, and how. Right. Absolutely. I think it's it's not only understanding what's going on, but it's actually being able to uh, proactively enforce policy over what you can do, right? Very similar to, um, you know, taking a windy road. Yeah. If you don't have guardrails on the side, you're going to take that road very slowly, right, very carefully, maybe even make a mistake and go off the edge. If you put those <clears throat> policy guardrails on, which if you're talking about a virtual infrastructure environment, um, it's very unique, right? It's uh, object level, right? It's no longer physical systems that you yep. can put behind a, a rack or a lock or, you know, hardwire from one system to the other. These are all virtual objects that have a tendency to move and also be collapsed with other objects in the same environment. And, you know, just like we saw server consolidation uh, as a wave, now we're seeing shared environments as a wave. So. Not only are you combining multiple systems on single hardware, now yeah. you're also collapsing multiple business units, right? Yeah. Uh, multiple application tiers all in a single environment. And it's that policy enforcement, right? The ability to enforce, uh, say, tenant segregation, right? And isolation. The ability to uh, enforce, um, you know, very granular roles, object level tag policies. Uh, yep. two-man rule, right, and have the visibility over what's happening and the controls that you have that's stopping those bad actions is absolutely critical. Well, it's true, and you guys have expanded so much. I mean, you guys cover almost all aspects of a V-block these days. You've hit some of the other, the Dell, DRAC, and ILO, HP ILO, and even IPMI systems so that you can actually get that same level of control for management of the physical systems. You, you've breached into NSX land and SDN land to do the exact same thing. And this is actually really crucial, especially when you look at what they, the changes they made to vSphere 6 so that literally I now have in vSphere 6, if I look at the vSphere log, for one of the logs in it, I actually know the user that did the thing in vCenter. Uh -huh. So now I actually have you guys telling me you know who did the thing action in vCenter. The server knows who does the action in vCenter. They correlate yep. quite nicely. Exactly. So I get this full picture all the way up and down the stack. And that actually, we've been asking that for VMware for years. Yep. Yeah. So this, is, this is a little known <laughs> thing and people don't even know it's there yet. And this is great. I mean, yeah, you finally have the ability to correlate. All the way up and not based on time. Yes, not based on time, but, you know, being able to correlate to the user is a big first step. Huge. And I always do it this way. If I base it on time, I could always find, yeah, I got a set of users who all did the same thing at the same time, which yep. was the real user that did it. Exactly. You know, I don't know. Now I do. And yep. you guys make it finer grain so I know exactly who did what all the way down and up, up and down the stack. Yeah, what exact attribute was changed and what was before and what was after. And that's, you know, very critical, especially when you look at, again, at that software-defined stack and the ability to say, you know, configure a production VM to connect to the DMZ port group, right? That's, a, that's something you want to know, 
and uh, you need yeah. that level of visibility. Well, and not only that, it could be connect these 20,000 VMs to the DMZ. Exactly. exactly. I mean, so you want to stop it and know for a fact <laughs> that it is stopped, right? Yeah. And you also want to know if it's allowed why it was done. I mean, someone could have, you need some sort of limits. And this is really what's going to happen in the containerized world is as we move up the stack away from the hypervisor, away from the hardware even more, into more and more automation. How does a tool like yours actually even fit in? I mean, if I'm talking about Docker, I'm almost all 100% command line now. Yep. And I'm scripting it, I'm maybe using a Jenkins server, I may be using a Vagrant or some other service to do the, the automation for me so that I can say, hey, you know what? I want 100 of these or I want 20,000 of these. Whatever yep. these are, spread across how many virtual machines there are, I may have to spin up virtual machines, spin up containers, connect up the applications, do maybe some security checking through some other tools, and I have to do it in an automated fashion across four clouds. Yep. It's not the easy world anymore. We're not just dealing with one lone virtual environment with 32, 64 nodes and several of those. We're talking about multiple clouds, tens of thousands of containers spread out all over. How's a tool like yours even help me with that? And do I need that help? Or do I need so, something different? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's all an evolution that we're all seeing, right? Yeah. Um, and it's beyond containers. If, if you, you and I were talking five years ago, we were probably talking about different hypervisor platforms. Yes. <clears throat> and in that period of time, what's emerged is everything from um, SDN, software-defined networking, mm -hmm. software-defined storage, right? Hyper-converged infrastructure on top of converged infrastructure, public cloud, right? Hybrid cloud, whatever your fav flavor is. And the next level of containerization that's, you know, now um, been uh, introduced, right? Application containers versus virtual machine containers. And <clears throat> our view is, it's absolutely critical in all of those data center transformation technologies to secure the management plane and secure the data, right? Because there are two things that are very critical in that environment. Where, where is the easiest place to compromise as much or all of the data and systems in a running data center, right? And one of our big banking customers uh, wrote up what's called a kill chain report, and they said the virtualization admin is the most powerful person in the environment across all their admins because they could copy any virtual machine and they could also delete any virtual machine or write a simple script to delete all the virtual machines in their environment. What was it? There was a, it was a case that came out. The guy did that from Sydney and McDonald's. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Shinogi Pharmaceuticals. Exactly. Well, and he did it $80,000, actually $180,000 worth of damage just by running a simple script. And probably even more important is the company was shut down for a week while they had to rebuild all those systems and recover for backup, from backup. Right? I know. No, you, you no company ever wants to go down. Well, not only that, I mean, there are companies out there these days that a week off, they could not survive it. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I, mean, I have... You, you look at Sony, right? <laughs> Sony had to go back to paper and pencil. <laughs> well, Sony's still around, but I actually know some medium and large enterprises out there that if they were down for three or four hours, they could handle that. If they were well, down for more than that, they would literally be out of business. Probably one of the best examples in the, the um, situation you cited was a company called Codespaces. Do you remember that one? No, Codespaces did everything wrong, though. But by the book, they did everything wrong by the book. I mean, they took the book and said, let's not do any of this. <laughs> but I bet you they're not the only ones out there. Oh, and no, there's a million and one companies doing the exact same thing because they don't know any better. Well, and if again, if you compromise that management account. Oh, game's over. Game's over. They deleted everything in EC2 and S3. So all running systems and all backups. Well, and you think about this way, it's like when I start talking to people about the, the, the lowest hanging fruit of virtualization security is to segregate management. Everybody yeah. goes, oh, no, no, i got to protect against escape the hypervisor, it's escape the <laughs> VM. I'm going, okay, let's think about this way. There are eight well-known, eight now or ten now, well-known yeah. attacks against SSL. Yeah. 
Yeah. And your management plane is susceptible to every one of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There are no well-known attacks against that are successful in the wild for escape the VM. Exactly. Yeah, it's the practical. Where's your risk? risk. It's the practical risk versus the theoretical risk. And good thing that we're not seeing that as much these days in accounts as we used to. Oh, it's a huge to, problem. Yeah, to, to your question about kind of application containers, you know, that's just the ne next evolution of containers, right? We've been, you know, we've been very unique in the market in the way we protect VM containers and the virtual infrastructure that runs it. Uh, very much all the same parallels exist with application containers, right? There needs to be a management platform for the, the, the applica application containers. You need to enforce, you know, role base and object level, uh, you know, segregation. You need to most likely encrypt data in those containers, right? Absolutely. And so we see all the same needs, um, but just a much earlier market because of uh, the fact that a lot of uh, application container technology is being run by, say, DevOps, right? And yes. not for production sort of critical data yet. Yep. Yeah, here's the thing. It is in production. That's the funny thing. People yeah. will develop using a agile methodology and a docker container and then they'll take that and say hey go put this in production and in production what they do is they extract everything out of the container and put it in production because they don't have docker containers in production yet yeah and they're a little afraid of them there's a number of companies up and coming about protecting docker containers and other containers of that ilk yeah but they're really concentrating on the container not the management of those containers exactly and we see it. We see the um, you know that market evolving, and so we want to be there uh, to address those needs. And we are working on that. And we believe that our strength in addressing security around private cloud and hybrid cloud will also um, you know migrate nicely to helping those same customers address security around application containers. Well, if you think about it, if I'm going to do application containers, let's just put a name on it, like Docker, or LXC, or Chirrut Jails, or whatever yeah. name you want to do, call yeah. it, they're almost all 100% on top of virtual environments Yeah. today. People right. say, oh, they're going to replace the virtual environments. It's like, no, they're not. Why? Yeah. Because I'm going to deploy them in Amazon. I'm going to deploy them in Azure. I'm going to deploy yep. them in SoftLayer. I'm going to deploy them in Rackspace. I'm going to deploy them in vCloud Air. Yep, absolutely. And they are virtual environments and those management, even if I just protect the management substrate of the virtual environments, I will gain some protection of the, of the containerized management layers because they yep. still talk to each other. Yep. But I need to really use scale up though i mean we saw this physical environment i had 100 machines let's say virtual environment i went down to three machines but i probably went down to six machines and now i have 4,000 vms well yep. not that many for six machines but i have like 1200 vms let's say yeah and that's possible no one does it today but it is possible with the mm -hmm. current technology but as machines get bigger and bigger and bigger, you're going to see that type of growth. Now you're going to throw containers and you're going to see 14 or 15 or 20 or 30 or whatever it is per virtual machine in a yep. cloud. Containers are going to just pop up everywhere. I need to contain that. I can contain my container management. Exactly. Somehow. Yep. Yeah, and you're, you're exactly right. The, to us, a container is yet another, not only um, an application container, it's just another level of containerization. And it's yet another object, right, that we have to not only manage but enforce policy around. And that's, you know, very much the core of HITRUST is we secure uh, environments, cloud infrastructure, right, um, and data center infrastructure where you have portable objects. Yes. And we secure those portable objects. And we've been, you know, working and scaling with our Customers, which are typically Fortune 500, that we're scaling to um, you know 10,000, 30,000, 100,000 right objects, and that's critical because as those application containers um, evolve, yep. that's going to get to that next level of scalability. And we've addressed a lot of those needs as we scale in those customer environments.
I mean, that's really what it is. It's a, it's a question of scale. Can a uh, modern tool today handle the scale of tomorrow? And the scale of tomorrow yeah. is not going to be chump change. It's not yeah. going to be 10x. Yeah. It's not going to be even 1,000x. I think it's going to be more like 10,000x. Yeah. Well, and, and you see it today, right? A lot of the companies that dealt with physical systems, they yeah. they can't or they've had a very hard time scaling to meet the needs of virtualization, right, and uh, private well, cloud environments. And then private cloud environments, yeah. just as you're pointing out, will also have this 10x scale, right, 20x scale over you know, with application containers. So yes, you need fundamentally a new way of addressing security and policy right within those environments. Well, and I think that this is the future. I mean, scale is at keeping everything in touch, in, in sync with that scale and growing smoothly and still controlling management is key. Yep, Encrypting absolutely. the data is also incredibly important. Yeah. And that's a tech, that's a discussion for another time because um, encryption is near and dear to my heart, heart, but there's a lot that goes on there. Oh yeah. So we should look for, um, for those people listening. We are at the end of this virtual thoughts episode. Thank you, Eric, for joining me. Thank you, Edward. And um, find High Trust at www.hightrust.com. Look for them at the VMworld. They have a VMworld booth, booth number. Oh, uh, look for us at VMworld. I don't remember the booth number. 422? 422. You're better. 422. You have better memory than, than I do. Well, so get the 411 on High Trust at 422. At 422. And, Edward, we'll see you at our party on Tuesday night. Absolutely. For people listening, it's a great party. Come on. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.